Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, I'm Anthony Whitlock. I'm a licensed surveyor in Colorado fairly recently. Um, basically what I want to do was make a video for the guys who are getting ready to take exams. The uh, FS exam and the PS exam. Uh, I know there's not too much out there for advice um, as far as you know study material and all that that you don't have to pay for. Um, so this is just my first video ever. Don't judge me. Um, I just wanted to give you guys a little, basically just a run through of what I would try to focus on. Now, I took the FS in 2015, so, you know, I can't give you the best advice for that. It was a long time ago. Um, basically what I would start with, the NCES practice exams. If you're taking the national exam, that's what this whole video is going to be focused upon. Uh, start with those. Those are going to be the most accurate representation of the kind of questions you're going to see. I don't care what anyone else tells you. There's, it's just, it's their exam. That's their practice exam. It just makes sense. Um, basically, start with that. For the FS, that's going to be your go-to. There is a ton of stuff on the FS exam that is not survey-related, I'd say. A lot of computer questions, th things that you would not expect to see. You'll see some of those questions on the practice exam, um, but you'll see a lot more other ones uh, on the actual exam that, you're going to be kind of confused by unless you focus on the stuff. Um, I would also say, if I mean, this is the go-to book. If you, if you don't know about it, I'd be surprised. One thousand one surveying solve problems. This doesn't say one thousand one, but this is the one. Jan Van Sickle. This is what you're going to want to study for. This is just a book of survey related questions. It's by far the best material you're going to have for practicing. Um, aside from that, math, strictly math. There, there is some law on it, so don't be shocked. Um, be prepared. It's, it's not just, you know, are you a party chief? Um, basically can you go out and throw stakes in the ground mathematic kind of stuff it, there is boundary law questions in that exam and quite a few uh be prepared for it Do, you're going to have to be the most well-rounded guy or girl in that you can be to take this exam it's extremely difficult um i i did pass my first time but when i walked out of that exam i was i didn't it could have gone either way uh, i was pretty pretty nervous about it um so aside from the FS exam, which I know touching the topic the way I just did doesn't help you, but just study, be prepared. Uh, and it's all math, mostly math. <laughs> um, that's my son behind me. <laughs> but basically what I would say for the PS exam, again, Jan Van Sickle, and just study his stuff. He, he's one of the greatest you know, technical knowledgeable surveyors out there. All right, so aside from the FS exam, of course, we have the PS exam. Um, this is going, you gotta look at the FS exam as literally, mostly a math exam to just really complex mathematics from basic mathematics up um, as it relates to surveying. Uh, the PS exam is a different animal. This is a legal exam. It's going to test your knowledge and abilities when it comes to determining legal property boundaries based upon evidence and particular situations. This exam, for me, was way, way, way easier than the FS exam. I, I love boundary. It's, it, that's where my passion related to surveying comes from. It's the history and um, solving boundaries of, with convoluted backgrounds, that kind of stuff. So... I'm sure if you're getting ready for the PS exam, you have something similar to this. This is a library, kind of. This is not all of it. This is a lot of it. Books, there's a lot of them out there. I would, you know, if you haven't heard, Clark and Brown are probably the best guys to, to focus on. They just, they really know their stuff. They've written a lot of books. Um, a lot of people have piggybacked off of them put their name on something um, and made it and written a, a different edition. This book is one of those. It says Clark on surveying and boundaries, but as you can see the authors below, um, that's not Clark. But this book is awesome. I would recommend it. It's gigantic. There's a ton of information in it. Um, this book, 
it's obviously so large you you can't just retain all of it so every time i skim through it or i start reading it a little bit more i learn something new i retain a new piece of information it's a really good book i would recommend it uh obviously there's just more than that uh, manual surveying instructions this is the 47 this was a gift I, i've got uh 2009 and a couple between um i don't care if you don't live in a pluss state if you live in a colonial state i don't care study the pluss and at first it's pretty tough to to really get a grasp on so put some focus into it there's going to be questions on the pluss system aside from that you've got more brown brown and eldridge here Evidence and Procedures for Boundary Location. This is another good book. There's a lot of principled surveying stuff. This is These authors, they're nationally accepted as basically being the guys pretty much defining surveying and what surveying is. The national exams are based upon a lot of their stuff and their principles they talk about in, in their books. Um, this guy, Writing Legal Descriptions. On the exam, you're not going to have too much too much about writing them, but there's going to be questions that you're going to have to understand how to write them, what the, what different words mean, how they apply to legal terminology. Read this thing. If if not only just for the exam, it's going to help you a lot in the professional world when when you start writing legal descriptions, signing documentation, and interpreting them as well. Excellent book. Get it. Um. As far as exam tips go, you see something like this, skip it. It's a convoluted mess. It's, you know, it's, it's this particular question is not that difficult to solve, but it's a lot of reading, understanding, making sure you understand what they're asking you. Um, skip it. Come back to it when you're done with the rest. Uh, it's these type of time, time wasting questions that you'll get to the end of your exam and you'll be thinking, oh, I don't have much time left. I gotta, you know, rush through the end. You don't want to rush. Um, as you probably know, a wrong answer and an unanswered question are the same thing. You answer all the questions. Take a chance. It's multiple choice. Um, do not leave anything blank. It's it's a waste of a of a chance. <laughs> Uh, but basically, yeah, don't waste your time on long questions. Get through them, um, skip them, get through the rest that you know right off the bat you just want to be confident with. Flag the ones you don't and come back to it. Everything's computerized now, I believe, for the national exams everywhere. But um, just flag them, come back to them, and take a shot. I would also say that um, there's, they trick you. There are tricky questions on this thing, guys. Um, I, one of the questions, I can't, I can't, you know, go into specifics on the questions. They make you sign a non-disclosure agreement when, when you take the exam for those purposes. Uh, but basically they will talk, they will put a question in front of you, a complex boundary question. They will talk about the West line of a, of a parcel of land for two paragraphs. They'll talk about the West line. They will talk about it. They'll talk about junior, senior rights related to it. It, you will think this question's going to be about the west line. Turns out they ask you about the east line. So you're so focused on all that information they put about the west line of this parcel, and their question is a simple, uh, just a simple corner question on, on the east line. Where does the corner go? And it's super easy to solve, but you're so focused the other way, you might screw that up and miss it. Um, so just really understand the questions before you answer these questions. Um, they will try to trick you guys. Um, that's pretty much all I got for now. Like I said, this is my first video. I'm pretty unorganized. I was just kind of spinning off the top of my head here. I would say, you know, if you guys are, are starting getting ready to take any of these exams, you're on the right track. This is, if you're surveying, you, you should love surveying. You're not going to be rich from surveying guys. So if you're starting to take these exams, I'm assuming there's some passion there, or you're at least trying to get to that next level in your career um, if you're going for your LSIT or LSI. Um, I hope you do. This is a great profession. I'm, I'm 32 years old. I've got 11 years of experience doing it, and over the years, you know, it started off as just a job for me. 
it, it was literally, I was 16 years old. My neighbor's father didn't want to see me sitting on my ass all summer, so he hired me on. Um, it went from just a job, just, you know, uh, just kind of coasting through life, not really caring, not knowing what I wanted to do. And it became my career. It, I fell in love with it when I really started understanding this stuff. It, it is a great profession, and it's, I wouldn't, I'd rather, there's nothing I'd rather be doing. Um, there's going to be more videos. I kind of just, I'm trying to figure out ways to be more connected to the profession to, you know, encourage younger guys to, and girls, I, you know. It's definitely a majority guy profession, but there are some great female surveyors, so no discrimination from many of you guys. Um, but yeah, stick with it. It gets better and better. I mean, the, the more you grow and the more you learn, the better. You're never, I don't care if you're doing this for 70 years, you're never going to know everything about surveying, especially the way technology is going too. Um, there is just so much to learn, even just the really historic stuff that you'll never know everything. And that's part of the great thing about the profession. Uh, that's all I got, man. Um, hopefully you guys watch it, enjoy it. I'll try to get better. Like I said, first video, never done it before. feels weird. Uh, I will talk to you guys again soon, hopefully. Bye.